Um, Madam Mayor, in moving the budget for 2017 80, what I'll try to do is try to keep to a, the usual format. However, I have to say that the budget that I'm going to move today, 17 18, could never be described as a typical or traditional PSZ Council budget. I do, of course, want to thank everyone who's been involved in the long and difficult process of putting this budget together. I want to thank the members of the Council, obviously, um, from both sides of the House, both the Liberal Democrats and the Labour. Uh, it's a difficult process to make difficult decisions. I think the way in which we conduct the process <coughs> does try to bring us together in towards a consensus. And I want to welcome the positive way in which members have engaged in that. Could I also thank um, the officers of the Council, and by that I don't just mean the strategy team, who of course have done an excellent and magnificent job, as usual, but I mean the entire workforce. Uh, people from every level within the council have engaged in the process, and I want to welcome the contribution of the trade. Trade unions, business leaders, community leaders, and stakeholders, uh, and of course our residents, many of whom have taken part in the consultation. I think we need to give our thanks to all of them for the support that they've demonstrated. Madam Mayor, I consider myself to be fortunate that I've been a member of this council since 1984 and I've participated in over 30 budget setting meetings. I suppose looking back, I should even consider myself to be fortunate that I was a member of the council during those very difficult days in the 80s, which I refer to as the Thatcher and Major years. During that period, the Tories literally destroyed the manufacturing and employment base of the North East of England. In five years, they destroyed over 166,000 <coughs> high quality manufacturing jobs in the North East of England and devastated our economy <coughs> with huge social consequences. However, the fact remains that th throughout those Thatcher and major years, there wasn't a single year when we received less in support grant than we received the year before. We never got enough, but we never got less. That's something that can't be said about the present generation of Tories. From day one of the coalition, Tories and Liberal <coughs> Democrats set out on a mission to implement austerity. Their aim, if you recall, was to eliminate the national budget deficit in one parliament. Five years. Well, we're seven years on. Public services, I've actually wrote down here, public services have been decimated, but that's not actually true. The concept of decimation was a punishment in the Roman army, where a legion of committed offence will drag out randomly what intent to be executed. What intent? Well, we've actually lost 46% of our support from government. So we've been decimated times nearly five times. In Gateshead, we've already suffered 130 million pounds of cuts. We've lost 2,000 staff. And grant aid from central government, as I've already said, has been reduced by 46%. We've lost 380 pounds for every man, woman, and child in Gateshead, over £800 per household. During the same period, the government, the previous coalition's plan to control national debt has failed miserably. In 2010, the total national debt of the UK was just over £860 billion. Today, that figure has almost doubled and stands at 1.7 trillion. And if the people of Gateshead and the most vulnerable in our community will hear pay the price of that failure. My mayor colleagues, I wish I could stand here today and report that that position will improve. But unfortunately, that's not the case. The Council's medium-term financial strategy sets out the scale of the challenge that we face. 
government grant has already, as I've said, been reduced by 46%, and will reduce by 2021 to zero. To zero. That's a further £32 million reduction in grant from central government by 2021. During the same period, we know that due to the growing elderly population, we will face a growth in demand, an additional growth in demand for adult social care of over £60 million. So by 2021, we face a further funding gap of £93 million. To put that in perspective, colleagues, if Gateshead Council in 2021 was to spend the, every single penny that we had available on adult social care and children's services alone, <coughs> we would be £20 million short. So, if we don't cut any grass, or we don't provide any trade and standard services, or we didn't enter any bins, or we didn't provide any leisure services, or any of the other hundreds of uh, required legal services, if we spend every penny on adult social care and children's services alone, we'd be £20 million short. So the message from that, colleagues, is absolutely clear. We can't cut our way out of this problem. Uh, we have to grow the council budget, reduce demand, and persuade people in Gateshead to step up to the plate to do more things themselves. Um, before moving on to the detailed budget proposals, can I say, as is usual, a few words about some of the successes that we've enjoyed over the past 12 months. Throughout our council plans and visions, we talk about the, a number of things, or a, couple, a number of words, keep on recurring. We talk about what a provider gets at the cares, gets at the chairs, <coughs> and a gets at the grows. So it's around those things that I've identified here as well about successes over the last 12 months. We all want Gator to be a place that cares, where people look after one another. Over the last 12 months, members will be aware of the success that's been occurring at Shaden's House in Burnley in the Bollinger Estate. Shaden's House has been there for many years, we're developing a, not just a national, but I think an international reputation in terms of the services that are being provided there for families and sufferers of dementia, uh, it provided day and respite care, and it's recently been uh, uh, inspected by CQC and has received an outstanding uh, judgment. And I know that Council of Administration and the rest of the portfolio team are currently working on ambitious plans to grow that service, which is clearly linked to part of our strategy of growth the Council's budget, and plans will come forward on that in the near future. In terms of our adult social care providers, the recent North East Care Award, I'm proud to announce that Gateshead Council's providers were recognised with three awards for excellence. Some of us will have also recently attended, in terms of look after children, many of us will have attended recently the event to celebrate achievement with our look after children. The 16th such occasion when we've done that we have more looked after children than any of in our history. 360 looked after children. And I think we can be proud of the service that has been provided there, provided there and the dedication of the staff who have been involved. I would also like to highlight the work that Gates and Council has done in terms of supporting Syrian refugee families. <coughs> I'm proud that Gates and Council has taken the second highest number of refugee families from Syria. Um, and some of you may be aware of either better some of these families or aware of some of the circumstances of these families and the circumstances from which they fled. And I think we need to celebrate and congratulate the work that's been done by our council on behalf of those families. I also want to say that I'm proud of of the, this council and the members of this council because we've stood together, all of us united, in terms of council motions that we've passed on combating racism and xenophobia. 
opposing the safe visit of Donald Trump to the United States, from the, the President of the United States of America to the UK, and an opposing um, forced economization of our schools in Gateshead. Colleagues, we all want Gateshead to be a place that shares, making the most of what we have. I'm pleased to report that over the past 12 months, work in conjunction with Gateshead Council, sorry, the Castle City Council, and the clinical commissioning groups, we managed to secure an additional £1 million to implement an arts and health programme which is called Well Gateshead Newcastle. I think we can also celebrate and be proud of the ongoing work of the partnership with our schools. Ofsted inspections of our schools continue to demonstrate the strength of that partnership, with 87% of schools in Gateshead either good or outstanding. I mentioned when I first became a member of this council in 1984, uh, Gateshead's record of achievement in education was, I think, at that time, could be described as, I'm trying to be polite and lamentable, uh, we languished in the bottom of the table, we were definitely in the bottom 10 out of 450 local education authorities. In reality, we were probably bottom. We now have records of achievement from our young people, which are well above the national average, and we have more good and outstanding schools than any other authority in the UK outside of London. Also, we've successfully paid for, next um, this year we paid for, and have won the um, responsibility of hosting the World Transplant Games in 2019. And also, we paid for and have secured uh, the the, along with Newcastle City Council, the uh, running of the Great Exhibition of the North in 2018. These are huge opportunities for Gateshead and for the North East of England to demonstrate the strength of our economy and to help build <coughs> businesses and the strength of our economy. We all want Gateshead to be a place that grows, not just economically, but also in confidence and in spirit. Over the last 12 months, 415 new homes have been built in Gateshead, 98 of which have been affordable. Work is now progressing on the new Follinsby Enterprise Zone, which has been supported with funding that we've secured from the Local Growth Fund, and when um, uh, finished, will help to support over 1,500 local jobs in the economy. We've also secured £4.2 million from the regional, European Regional Development Fund and from the Local Growth Fund to develop the Northern Centres for Emerging Technologies and that bill will open later this year. Finally but not least, we've also this year finally agreed a partnership agreement for the development of the Gateshead Keys. Now I have, want to stop at this stage to say something about that development because as I've said, it's very closely linked to our primary, um, primary uh, objective of developing and growing the Gateshead economy. We can't balance our budget by cutting. We have to have confidence in growing our economy. Now, I'd say this to clearly, you know, we're confident that that development will go ahead. But we need to do so with the support of the people of Gateshead. Because, and this is important about how we communicate what we are doing. That will involve a huge investment by this council. And people will quite rightly ask and want us to demonstrate the value for them. How come is it that you can close libraries or not do something else, but you can spend several million pounds, tens of millions of pounds, on the key side of the gate? And we have a reason for doing that. There's a it's to help support services within Gateshead, and I would like to maintain unity within the council about demonstrating to the people of Gateshead this is about having ambition and investment in their future. So turning to this budget, colleagues, and the budget for next year, on November the 8th we launched a public consultation, November the 8th, that's the same day that the, I know, the presidential election took place, on the 8th of November, didn't it, okay, anyway. I don't know if that's important. Anyway, the, the public consultation contained 63 
separate proposals to help to balance the budget if we have to do that. We also had a separate consultation on the issue of the library review, and that consultation was conducted. <coughs> As I've already said, colleagues, I want to thank everyone that took part in that consultation. And I also want to say, although it's been extremely difficult, we have listened. And we have been able to respond to the concerns that have been raised by stakeholders and by residents. Working differently and with more emphasis on early health, we've managed to achieve savings whilst reducing the need uh, to take some of the savings that were proposed within health and social care. We've also, uh, we're also keen to maintain work on environmental work within the community and that's for that reason that we have proposed not to go ahead with the proposal which was to remove further money from we control within Gateshead. We're also not recommending the proposal that would have reduced <coughs> yet further uh, winter maintenance, uh, the winter maintenance budget in Gateshead. Well, recommending taking a reduced level of savings in economic and housing growth and that's to maintain our priority on investment and maximising income. Members might remember it quite, I to say fractious, but they're, they're uh, a difficult uh, prag meeting that we had over this issue. Effectively the proposal initially was to remove £700,000. It was clear from the evidence that was presented that the loss in business income and the loss in council tax going forward is actually probably over the next four or five years at our income would be damaged by about four million pounds, which demonstrates the link between the necessity to invest and the ability to make income in the council. So although it's been extremely difficult, we haven't been able to put the full seven hundred thousand pounds back in. What we've managed to do is to shore up those those areas which are most vulnerable in terms of loss of income in terms of council tax support the local businesses. One of the most difficult decisions of course has been around the issues of the library's review. The consultation told us absolutely clearly that people really value the service provided by our libraries. It also told us that they are well used and that it's a highly regarded service. However, given the sheer scale of the reductions that we face, <coughs> The fact is that the current network is just not sustainable. We are therefore recommending a difficult decision to reduce the council's operated network. And we're proposing to work with our communities to expand the volunteer managed network. As a result of the decisions of this budget, staff numbers were reduced by a further 88 of course which will be removed. We will of course continue to work with the trade unions in uh, whatever way we can to ensure that the number of compulsory redundancies are reduced to a minimum. On the issue of council tax, the budget recommends uh, an increase in the combined council tax uh, by 4.99%. That's a 1.99 increase in the council tax and a 3% increase due to the adult social care uh, precept. In proposing the 3% social care precept, I want to say this. We're doing so because it's absolutely, uh, we have absolutely no alternative. The social care precept is fundamentally flawed as a means of funding the precious in adult social care. And it's not fair for the people of Gateshead. It's basically a national tax applied locally, with no correlation whatsoever between the money that's raised and where needs exist. The system uh, favours prosperous areas of the country where they're able to raise more money from a higher number of higher banned properties. The extra tax that will be raised does not even come close to meeting the increased needs within social care. In fact, in Gateshead, the amounts raised won't even 
cover inflationary costs and won't come anywhere near cover the additional costs covered by implementing the national living wage, never mind dealing with the increased levels of demand. So in conclusion, Madam Mayor, colleagues, said right from the very beginning, this process isn't easy, isn't easy, and it isn't going to get any easier. I want to say some facts here. Over the next three years, we face a funding gap of £72 million. And over the next five years, that funding gap is £92 million. Today I set before you our revenue spending plans for the next year of nearly £197 million and a capital programme of £66 million. I know that the report contains many challenging issues for all of us. However, I'm confident that Gates will come together. I'm confident that we will unite to deliver this budget. And I'm con uh, confident that we will continue to make a positive difference to the people of Gateshead. Madam Mayor, in moving this motion, but I also <laughs> look to Mark Harrison, who's reminded us several times today, to remind you that I'm also moving the amendment, which is laid out, sorry, I'll read the exact motion itself. Martin Cannon will move the council to read the recommendation <laughs> set out in section 18 of the report, noting the amendments contained in the updated appendix 2 that have been tabled and the organisations affected are aware of the position that relates to them. Madam Mayor, can I formally move those, uh, that motion and those amendments and urge council to support this.